Having completed all their pre-launch tests, including the wet dress rehearsal, Starship 25 and Super Heavy Booster 9, are now ready for the second integrated flight test. We have a decent number of hints to believe that the test flight could take place as early as November 15. First of all, SpaceX has announced that they plan to launch the Starship as soon as mid-November. A notice alerting mariners to an impending rocket launch near Boca Chica Beach beginning on November 15 has recently been posted. Mariners are advised to avoid all waters within rocket flight trajectories originating from the launch site. A navigational warning notice for Starship re-entry over the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii has also been posted. A warning notice to airmen for Starship Flight 2 has also been issued for Mexican airspace starting November 13. In addition to the warning notices, road closures for the Starship launch have already been scheduled for November 15. NASA's WB-57 aircraft arrived in Texas from California on November 8 to monitor the Starship launch. The plane will help NASA capture footage of Starship flight from multiple angles for post-flight engineering analysis. So, in short, SpaceX's website, warnings from U.S. government agencies, road closure notices, and the arrival of NASA's research aircraft all point to the Starship's second integrated flight test happening as early as November 15. On November 9, technicians moved the flight termination system charges from a nearby bunker to the launch area. Afterwards, they carefully installed the FTS charges outside the common dome area of the booster in the ship. A flight termination system is a safety mechanism designed to destroy the rocket in flight by triggering an explosion to ensure public safety if the launch vehicle goes out of control or off course during its flight. During the test flight on April 20, there was a 40-second lag between the system's activation and the rocket's breakdown. SpaceX has now upgraded the system to immediately destroy the launch vehicle in the event of an anomaly. FAA regulations state that installation of the flight termination system must wait until a launch license has been obtained. The installation of FTS charges means SpaceX may have already obtained the launch license, but the news has not yet been released to the public. Or maybe the license is on its way, and the FAA has authorized SpaceX to install the flight termination system. Either way, we'll soon hear the news that the FAA has granted SpaceX a Starship launch license. After the installation of the FTS, SpaceX stacked Ship 25 on Booster 9 and began preparing the integrated vehicle for launch. On launch day, two hours before liftoff, SpaceX will begin loading more than 10 million pounds of methane and liquid oxygen into the launch vehicle. Following a final health check, the launch director will give the green light for liftoff at the T-40 second mark. The flame deflector will be activated 10 seconds prior to liftoff, spraying thousands of liters of water into the area directly below the rocket's engines to divert the exhaust plume away and protect the launch pad hardware and the launch vehicle from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during liftoff. Booster engine ignition will occur at the T-3 second mark, and 5 seconds later, the rocket will lift off from the launch pad. Approximately 2 minutes and 41 seconds into the flight, the booster stage will separate from the upper stage and attempt a soft water landing in the Gulf of Mexico, about 30 kilometers from the shore. Meanwhile, Starship will continue its flight around the world, nearly reaching orbital velocity, before splashing down at the targeted location approximately 100 kilometers off the northwest coast of Kauai. The splashdown is scheduled to occur 90 minutes after liftoff from Starbase. If the mission is a complete success, it will open up the next phases of SpaceX's Starship program. Perhaps SpaceX could meet the goal of launching Starlink satellites on Starship by the end of next year. Maybe they can also begin demonstrating Starship's in-orbit refueling capability, which would be an important breakthrough for NASA's Artemis program. On the other hand, if Starship blows up before clearing the launch pad, it will set back the rocket program for several months. It might even prompt more scrutiny from regulatory agencies, which would cause additional disruption to Starship's timeline. SpaceX has made more than 1,000 tweaks, upgrades, and modifications to the Starship since the April test flight to prevent failures in the future. The second flight test will debut the new hot stage separation technique and the Raptor electric thrust vector control system used to gimbal the engine for steering the rocket. The launch pad also received many upgrades after the first flight. Reinforcements to the pad foundation and the water-cooled steel flame deflector are among many other enhancements. Also, as you can see, compared to the first test flight, the timing of various mission profile milestones differs in the second flight. Please check out my previous videos to learn in detail about all the upgrades and modifications Starship, Raptor, and the launch site received after the first flight test. Links are in the description. Before the April 20 launch, Elon Musk said that a successful test flight would mean the rocket didn't blow up on the launch pad. This time, SpaceX hopes to go a little farther.
Musk predicted that there's a roughly 60% chance that Starship will make it to near orbital velocity on the second test flight. In my opinion, a flight up to successful stage separation and Starship ignition would mean that SpaceX has mitigated the problems that resulted in fuel leaks and fires during the April test flight. It would also indicate that SpaceX has improved its Raptor engine's reliability and the rocket's new electric thrust vector control system. What do you think will be the outcome of the upcoming test flight? Share your views in the comments. Starbase is home to numerous rockets at different stages of production. If the second Starship fails to reach orbit, additional vehicles are poised for flight. A recent SpaceX FCC filing revealed the flight profile of the Starship's third integrated flight test. The booster's path will be similar to that of the second integrated test flight during the third mission. After stage separation, the booster will perform a partial return and land in the Gulf of Mexico. Starship, after attaining an altitude of 235 kilometers, will perform a powered targeted landing in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX is planning to demonstrate high data rate communication with the vehicles via Starlink satellites during the third mission. As per the FCC filing, SpaceX intends to carry out the third flight test between December and February. However, since an FCC filing is not necessarily a reliable indicator of a target launch window, we should not conclude that launch number three will occur within this time interval. At this time, it's unclear if the third integrated flight test will see the launch of Ship 26 or Ship 28. Ship 26, which completed a single-engine static fire test last month, is currently at the Rocket Garden. Ship 28 is being prepared for static fire tests near the Rocket Garden. Booster 10 will be the super-heavy prototype launched in the third flight test. The booster has already completed four cryogenic proof tests and is being prepared for static fire tests inside the Mega Bay. Please check out my previous video to learn about the status of other ship and booster prototypes currently in the production and testing phases. Link in the description. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. SpaceX launched a cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station atop a Falcon 9 rocket from NASA's Kennedy Space Center on Thursday, November 10. As its name suggests, the mission, dubbed CRS-29, is the 29th resupply mission that SpaceX is flying to the orbiting lab for NASA. Following stage separation, the rocket's first stage returned to Earth and made a successful landing at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station's landing zone 1. The launch marked the second flight for the stage, which previously launched the Crew-7 mission carrying astronauts to ISS. Twelve minutes after liftoff, the Cargo Dragon spacecraft separated from the Falcon 9 upper stage and began its journey towards the space station. The Dragon resupply spacecraft carried nearly 3,000 kilograms of scientific research, crew supplies, and hardware to the orbiting laboratory. A highlight of the science-packed mission includes a Luma-T, a two-way laser array to test out high-speed communications in low-Earth orbit. Once mounted outside the station, the Illuma-T terminal will use laser signals to send higher-resolution information to the agency's laser communications relay demonstration system, which is in geosynchronous orbit around Earth. LCRD then beams the data to various NASA ground stations. The system can send and receive information at higher data rates than traditional radio frequency systems, making it possible to send more images and videos to and from the space station in a single transmission. Additionally, the Illuma-T demonstration opens the door for placing laser communications terminals on spacecraft orbiting the moon or Mars. Another science experiment on board the Dragon spacecraft is NASA's Atmospheric Waves Experiment. The experiment, which will also be mounted outside the station, will use an infrared imaging instrument to measure the characteristics, distribution, and movement of atmospheric gravity waves. Atmospheric gravity waves are one mechanism for transporting energy and momentum within the climate system, and they play a role in defining the climate and its evolution. Apart from these, the CRS-29 mission carried many more scientific investigations to the orbiting laboratory that will provide valuable insight for researchers. Please check out the link in the description to learn about each one of them. The Dragon cargo spacecraft will arrive at the space station and autonomously dock at the forward port of the Harmony module at about 10.20 p.m. UTC on Saturday, November 11. A couple of hours after the resupply ship docked to the space station, NASA astronauts will unload cargo and time-critical science experiments from the spacecraft. The spacecraft will stay docked at the orbiting laboratory for about one month before undocking and eventually splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. During its return trip, the spacecraft will carry critical science and hardware from the space station to teams on Earth. Rocket Lab expects to resume electron launches as they have concluded investigations into the vehicle's launch failure in September. 
On September 19, an electron rocket lifted off from Rocket Lab's New Zealand facility carrying a synthetic aperture radar spacecraft for the California company Capella Space. Stage separation happened as planned about two and a half minutes after launch, but something went wrong shortly after that. A brief glow was seen when the rocket's upper stage single Rutherford engine ignited, followed by orange sparks. And then the video from the rocket's onboard cameras froze. The rocket's telemetry data showed the velocity of the rocket's upper stage decreasing, suggesting the upper stage engine was not generating any significant thrust. Without enough speed to reach orbit, the upper stage and its payload plummeted into the Pacific Ocean downrange of Rocket Lab's launch site. After two months of extensive investigation, the Rocket Lab has identified the reason behind the anomaly. At 151 seconds into the mission, there was an unexpected electrical arc within the power supply for the upper stage. That shorted the battery packs that power the upper stage single Rutherford engine, causing a loss of power. The arc resulted from several factors, including a ripple voltage in the power system, the presence of traces of helium gas, and an undetectable flaw in insulation in the power system. In order to prevent such incidents in the future, Rocket Lab has spent the last few weeks making necessary modifications to the rocket's upper stage. They enhanced ground testing of the upper stage and added more pressure to the upper stage's battery frame section to prevent arcing conditions from forming. The company has already received authorization from the Federal Aviation Administration to resume electron launches from Launch Complex 1 in New Zealand. Rocket Lab is planning a dedicated electron mission for Japan-based Earth Imaging Company, IQPS, during a launch window that opens on November 28 and runs through December. SpaceX recently lifted a crew access arm into place on its second launch pad, located on the Florida coast. SpaceX currently uses Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center to launch astronauts as well as cargo missions to the International Space Station. For the past several months, the company has been working to upgrade its second Florida launch pad, Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, to handle both crewed and uncrewed Dragon flights. The company recently completed the construction of a new launch tower at SLC-40. The crew access tower at Pad 39A is actually left over from the space shuttle days, and on the other hand, the tower at SLC-40 is brand new and was designed by SpaceX. On November 6, construction crews hoisted a crew access arm onto the SLC-40's tower using a series of cranes and harnesses. The 25-meter-long crew access arm will serve as a bridge for astronauts to board the Crew Dragon spacecraft for launch. The access arm is mostly white in color, and the walkway is enclosed with windows running along its walls. As per reports, the new crew access arm will see its first use in support of Axiom Space's third private astronaut mission to the space station, currently scheduled for January 2024. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.